Welcome back to Aldo Scramanti and uh, Quebeca City here on the Eastern Cape. It's round three of the Extreme Festival and round three of the Global Touring Cars and Global Touring Cars Super Cup category now combined and rolling out onto the grid to get sorted out for race one. As you can see a nice field of cars there. Six of them from the Global Touring Car category and a further ten just behind there from the incredibly popular and uh, growing Volkswagen based Super Cup class. Bit of a change up in terms of the stalwarts at the front end of that category for this weekend but uh, we'll see how things change up as we get into the thick of it as well. But uh, let's have a look at uh, how they line up on the grid. Robert Volk alongside Lee Thompson for Team Universal Motorsport and Red Racing in the BMW M2. He's uh, best qualifying so far in that car alongside Robert Volk. That's how things start out here for the first one. And as we get into the thick of it, uh, you can see just how uh, things are going to get sorted out in the background. There's a bit of maneuvering happening in the background as well there for uh, Scott Temple, who's up to fourth place alongside Julian van der Watt in the AutoZone Ford. He's now moved up into third place. Nice qualifying from him. And it looks like Mandel Nakani and Michael van Rooyen battled a little bit this morning in the qualifying session to get their cars up to the front end of the field. But it's uh, fifth and sixth place for them. Behind them, Brad Liebenberg leads up the Super Cup category ahead of Machotzi, Jonathan Machotzi from uh, Volkswagen Motorsport at their home ground. Then Saud Variawa with a nice qualifying just ahead of Jeff Kruger. The outgun Jeff Kruger, you must know what you're doing, particularly around the circuit that Jeff Kruger is so good at. And Variawa is just showing more and more intensity and his ability just gets better and better, as does the man right behind him, Mikel Patamba, driving for the Patamba Racing and Toys R Us uh, Creative Inc. car. Uh, alongside Jason Campos for uh, Campos Transport, of course a race winner only a couple of weekends ago. Then you've got uh, Nick Davidson leading out the Masters ahead of Roy Campos, that's uh, Jay's dad. Nice to have Roy Campos back in a race car as well. Of course it's Keegan Campos's car that he's just warming up for Keeks. On a side note for Team Perfect Circle is behind them and then Sean Dermany lines up alongside in the uh, SMD Exotics Polo Super Cup. Behind the brain in the Otakure car He's uh, second last on the grid and alongside him will be Manoj Maharaj in the second of those SMD exotic and Lusso cafe cars from the uh, KwaZulu Natal North Coast. So we've got guys from the North Coast, East Coast, West Coast, they're all here about to go to battle for the first race in the Global Touring Cars and Super Cup Cars class. Down on the grid, Claude is going to catch up with a couple of the uh, drivers that are there. Let's go down there and catch up with him and see exactly who he's got and also look out for the uh, Dunlop presentation that's going to happen for pole position there and Robert Volk gets himself two and a half thousand rand courtesy of Dunlop tyres. Yeah, I think uh, we struggled a bit yesterday, so the car dial in for quali. Uh, we had a nice consistent pace as well, so yeah, I think with this 10 lap sprint race, just about trying to get a gap initially. Hopefully, Julia can slip in behind me and uh, we can get through the first corner unscathed. So, yeah, it should be a nice uh, close sprint. Um, looking forward to it. All the best. Cheers, thank you. while the interview was happening as well. The reason Michael van Rooyen is not at the front where he should be, of course he over boosted during qualifying. So the penalty is that he'll start in sixth place in the back of the global touring car grid. So we'll watch for some maneuvering happening from uh, Michael van Rooyen. We're also going to head down to pit lane and uh, onto the grid to uh, catch up now with the presentation to Brad Liebenberg, who will also be getting himself two and a half thousand rand courtesy of ATS and um, up tires. Brad will be pretty happy with that. He comes into this round leading the championship in the Global Touring Car Super Cup class. It's pretty tight between himself, Mochotzi, Campos. Let's have a chat to Brad and find out what he's got in plan. 
Uh, Brad Liebenberg, you've just racked up another pole. Uh, talk me through it. Yeah, it was a decent lap. Um, I think there was a little bit more in it, but um, nevertheless, glad to be on pole. Uh, obviously, we're going to try and keep it there. So, look forward to the race. I think it's going to be a close one. The wind's definitely going to play a factor, but um, for sure, looking to put my head down and uh, come up with the victory. All the best for us, man. Thank you so much. So standing by now for the two separate starts that will be happening for Global Touring Cars. Yes, apologies there. There are actually 13 Super Cup cars. I was uh, not getting my maths right while I was trying to concentrate on uh, getting information fed to me from the production team as well as from parts on the grid from Vaughan Williams who's telling me all about Michael van Rooyen. And uh, of course I was uh, looking at the, the grids, uh, the timing monitor and of course what's happening out on our uh, YouTube and live Facebook streams as well. So 13 cars about to go there. Uh, yeah, well, it's an enduro. I wouldn't call it an endurance race. Ian Pepper sending me a, a little comment there. It's an enduro of some nature. And I wish you all the very best with a speedy recovery after that little incident on the two-wheeled side of things there, Ian. But thanks for joining us, buddy. I appreciate the uh, support and also the uh, information being passed on. And apologies there for uh, miscounting. But yeah, there are a couple more than what I what actually said there were in terms of Super Cup. Ian van der Bach has joined us as well. So is Paul Stevens by the looks of things. There's the new AutoZone colors on uh, Julian van der Watt's car. Nice to see AutoZone getting back into motorsport as well. Great to see them jump on board with a car that has already taken a victory in the uh, global touring cars this year. So uh, certainly getting onto a chance of getting a little bit of additional coverage there for Julian van der Watt. And he'll be looking to uh, hopefully uh, give them a good run for their, for their money. He's certainly one of uh, Quebec and Aldo Scramante's biggest fans on the right-hand side of the circuit. And we're looking forward to now all the uh, fanfare that happens with Global Touring Cars. <laughs> I like that comment. Also coming out again, Pep, and I'm sure that Roy Campos will enjoy it later on this evening when he catches up and watches this one. Probably even straight after the race, in fact. But uh, a 15-minute race for Roy Campos would be an enduro as well. So <laughs> he's definitely going to have his work cut out for him, having not been behind the seat of a race car for a while. We've got two separate safety cars, as you can see there, the pace car coming out of Volkswagen Motorsport Academy. That'll be leading off our Global Touring Car Super Cup class with Brad Liebenberg alongside Bachotzi. But it's Volk who is alongside Lee Thompson, Julian van der Watt, Temple, Bachotzi, and as you can see there, the Rustenberg Rocket at the back after overboosting and qualifying. So he's definitely going to have his work cut out for him to try and get through and to find a way past. Remember, this first one is uh, only a 10 lapper. So they've got to just keep it all together now for 10 laps. Later on today, Global Touring Cars will also be having a 30 minute plus one lap endurance race. So it's slightly different variation to what we normally have at the Extreme Festival and Global Touring Car events. But a big welcome to everybody around the world who's watching us here on our live stream. Global Touring Cars now starting to get behind the official safety car today. Four Toyotas, one BMW and one Ford about to go to battle for Global Touring Car Supremacy here at the Aldo Scramante circuit. Behind that, the additional Super Cup class. And an incredible fight expected there as well. Brendan Kelly is busy watching us as well, but he's standing upstairs. He's supposed to be doing commentary, not listening to my commentary. What are you going to just put me on the microphone and let me do your work for you, Brent? <laughs> just kidding. Keep up the good work upstairs as well. Brendan Kelly, of course, bringing all the live trackside action here to people that are down in pit lane and a few of the marshals and medics that are out on the circuit as well. Here we go. Robert Volk about to dictate the pace across the line for the first heat of Global Touring Cars. Look how tightly they packed in there. Mandalam Nakani right on the bumper of Scott Temple as they go across the line. The lights are out and down towards turn one we go. Robert Volk getting the drop. But Lee Thompson's going to try and outgun him there in the BMW if he can. He's going to have his work cut out for him because here comes Van der Watt on his inside. Julian Van der Watt in the AutoZone 4 just diving through and finding a way past. He's up onto the inside. Lee Thompson is going to try and keep him honest around the outside of Turn 1. That takes a lot of skill to get around the outside of Turn 1, particularly on cold Dunlops. And there you can see just how difficult it is. Running high and wide off the circuit. Looks like Imna Kani made a small mistake, allowing Mark Confinorian to dive through on his teammate and get through up into fifth place. So that's how they head through for the very first time out of Hangar and up towards the hairpin for the first time now. This used to be, of course, Toyota hairpin. And now it's a Toyota that leads things out onto the brakes. 
through the back. Oh, Campos side by side with Kruger and runs onto the dirt. Just ahead there. You can see Roy Campos is right on his uh, son's tail. As Jason and Roy go fighting with Jeff Kruger. Kruger's gone through slightly on that start. I think Brad Liebenberg leads it out as they head towards the uh, top end of the hairpin. Leaders in global touring cars already into Dunlop Corner for the first time. And uh, you can see, yes, it is Mandel Makani who's returned the favor and got through there on the Marco Fanoyen. In fact, I think Marco Fanoyen might have been the man who ran wide. Davidson going at it with Andre Besaidnot. besaidnot has got the Odecure car of your underbrain right on his tail as they come under braking there just behind Mikel Patamba. Patamba in the Toys R Us Polo Cup, uh, Super Cup car as he dives through. There's a change up between the two Toyota Gazoo racing machines there. Van Royen gets ahead now on Mdekani. Mdekani going to try and run with his teammate to try and close things down on Temple. Temple is a man in fourth place, second of the Invest Chem Chemical Logistics machines as they go through into Hangar one more time. Up onto the braking point at the hairpin. You'll watch for late braking coming out of Julian Fanova to try and close the gap down on Robert Volk. Volk pulled about a half a second there on that first lap. Sawood Variawa with big pressure coming from Jeff Kruger. In the background, a little bit of dust in the back as well. But as they come flying through now, you can see just how difficult it's going to be here for these guys. Nice maneuver there. Look at the amount of pressure being applied there from Mikel Patamba to try and get through on Campos. I think Roy Campos has actually changed up the positions there from uh, his point of view. He's got through on Mikel Patamba a bit further back. Lee Thompson though, now starting to bridge the gap onto the back end of the Ford. So that uh, Ford in second place in front of it at the wheel, also zone on the side in front of that car now. Nice to see, as I said, that uh, sponsor back into motorsport in South Africa. This is Jeff Kruger closing on Variawa. Campos, Campos and Mikhail Patamba. Davidson right behind that. That's how they go through for the very first time in uh, a full flighted uh, uh, lap as opposed to what we're seeing before. And see when those hazard lights go on as well. That's potentially when we're going to see the push to pass mechanism being used by these cars. Remember, they only get a slightly shortened version of the push to pass compared to the Polo Cup guys. But uh, it certainly does help them out. Jason Campos, Roy Campos, Patamba, Davidson. On a side note for Team Perfect Circle. Big gap down to uh, the SMT, SMD exotic cars there of Sean Dermany and Manaj Maharaj. But they're still in the hunt as well. Nice little fight on here. Look at, look at the pressure being applied here from the Rustenburg Rocket. Michael van Rooyen means business. So does Thompson. Late on the brakes from Lee Thompson. Trying to run a slightly different line. Watch for the cutback there. Late Apex coming out of Thompson to try and get the drive onto the main straight and complete another lap. Amazing stuff from him as he tries to get through there on uh, Julian van Avat for second. Van Avat goes defensive. Here comes Thompson. Can he get that M2 on the inside? No, he can't. Not close enough into turn one. Another lap completed by these guys. Absolutely amazing stuff from Global Touring Cars. Once again here, Saud Variawa also looking to close things down there on Jonathan Mahotzi. They come out of the S's. No changes at this point in time, but there's massive pressure being applied at the front end of this race. And it's coming from Lee Thompson on the back end of uh, the leading Ford, the only Ford out there at this point in time, the AutoZone Ford of Julian van der Watt. Team Red Racing and Universal Motorsports, uh, Lee Thompson on his tail. Leader of the race in Super Cup, it's Brad Liebenberg in the Sparco car. He leads out over Jonathan Mahotzi, the two stable mates. Basically going at it there for Volkswagen Motorsport. Brilliant stuff from the two of them. As they get to the front end, you can see it's a bit of a gap that they pulled over third place Saud Variawa. But Variawa's got his own problems. He's trying to find, fend off the attack coming from Jeff Kruger and looks like Jason Campos might be there as well. So that completed. Getting into the thick of a chair, you can see just how things could change up here between Lee Thompson and Van Avat. Is Michael Van Rooyen going to have a go here at Temple at some point in time? Was he going to wait for it a little bit later on? Chemical logistics machines there in one and four at this point in time. That is Mikhail Patampa, head of Nick Davidson. There goes Andre Besaidno for Team Perfect Circle. He's looking to try and close that gap down there on Davidson. Davidson and Variawa using those push-to-pass mechanisms. You can see the hazard lights coming on, telling us that they're using those uh, push-to-pass mechanisms that are available in the Super Cup class. Change up possibly coming here. Is Lee Thompson going to find a way through here on the second place forward of Funavat? Was Funavat going to fend him off for the rest of this race? We've got uh, five laps and one corner to go as they head up towards Dunlop again. The Dunlop tyres are now in their own. They are up to perfect optimum race temperature. The grip is good. The surface is very good here at Aldous Gravanti as well. They're now looking to put the, uh, the rubber down. Of course he's doing the same thing as he tries to close that gap. Or the motorsport versus the Sparco car there of Brad Liebenberg. Sawood Variawa still fending off Jeff Kruger. Variawa's had a turnaround here of note. Then it's Jason Campos, behind that Roy Campos, Campos and Campos 
running in formation flying. Roy Campos leading things out in terms of the Masters category though. So a nice welcome return there from Roy Campos' point of view as he comes on. There he is. He's got Mikel Patumbo all over the back of him looking for a way through there, one of the youngsters. And uh, certainly a man of the future to watch out for. Second place is Davidson, third place in the Masters. Andre Besaid note in the T-Perfect Circle Polo Super Cup. Had a little bit of a gap now opening up between front of back. Looks like Lee Thompson might have made a mistake, a small mistake somewhere on track. Has lost him about four or five car lengths there to the auto zone forward. The brakes into Dunlop Corner, slightly different lines out of those two drivers. You can see Lee Thompson trying to get the late apex to get the drive onto the straight again. That's exactly what he does to come and complete the halfway stage of this race. Super start here from the Global Super Global Touring Cars and from the Global Touring Car Super Cup category. This is exactly what we expected to see here from GDC and GDC Super Cup. Michael van Rooyen trying to close things down. Saud Variawa still fending off Jeff Kruger. Kruger looking for a way through, hasn't found it just yet. Talk to what Jeff Kruger's seeing though. Jonathan McCorsey and Brad Liebenberg getting away at the front end and that's not doing any of his championship hopes any good at this point in time with Variawa, the man in the middle of them. Said Saul Bariawa and Mikel Patamba slowly but surely becoming a big threat in the Super Cup category. Massive improvements coming out of both drivers. Bariawa hanging on for his possible first podium. Certainly looking to try and cement that one, that is for sure. And Carter has gone from leaps and bounds into the Super Cup class. Brad goes defensive. Oh, a little lock up on the brakes there from Brad. The pressure's on and he locks up again. Second time there from Brad Liebenberg as he comes out of the hip and the pressure is certainly being felt there from Brad Liebenberg's point of view from Jonathan Mahotzi who's all over the back of him looking for a way through. Mahotzi is applying the pressure and it looks like it's starting to pay off. Can he make it stick and pick up his first victory of the season? Make him the fourth victor in Global Touring Cars Super Cup class for the year. And we're only in round three at this point so there's a lot of work still to be done here for these drivers. Campos just in the background maintains fifth place. If I look just in the background of that, it should still be Roy Campos hanging on for a potential win in the Masters class. And it's a class amongst, in amongst the class here as well for the Masters. Actually just the age group of the drivers that has made them into the Masters class. But it's brought along the likes of Nick Davidson and Darby Ulefier to this battle. And a couple of other drivers who are thinking about coming to join the party as well here. As Global Touring Cars gets uh, an additional boost into the Super Cup category late breaking from Van Rooyen but he's not able to do anything on Temple. Temple's matching him at almost every turn and on the, every time he climbs on the loud pedal there's just no answer. They are so evenly matched those two drivers and the skill level is basically pretty, pretty much at the same in terms of their ability in a saloon car. This is the first time that of course uh, Scott Temple has been down at the uh, Aldo Scramanti circuit in a saloon car. So it's a slightly different machine to what he would normally ra race here in the past and uh, possibly would have taken a couple of victories in single seaters in the past as well with Formula 1600s and in the original Volkswagen, uh, Formula Volkswagen category as well. Flying through hangar one more time, no worries at all though, but uh, there's definitely a big charge coming from Van Rooyen's point of view. They're also trying to close that gap down on Lee Thompson. Lee Thompson could be in a bit of problems here within the next couple of laps with two to go. And there's a, well, one and a half as they come through there now. Coming up and uh, over the rise towards Dunlop Corner one more time. We're heading into what is probably the penultimate lap of this race. Yeah, big move yeah, from Michael van Rooyen now. Tries to get right underneath that wing of the uh, third Corolla, or the second one on track at this point in time. The Carney's dropped back ever so slightly. He's into the clutches almost of Brad Liebenberg. But as they come down onto the brakes, is there going to be any change up here? We're on to the final lap according to the timing monitor. Not sure if they did a similar thing to what they did with the Polo Cup though. They had it uh, as an eight lap race to start with, but it was actually a ten lapper. Looks like uh, we have indeed completed, I think it's only, no, well, it's according to the timing monitor, says we're on the final lap. So we're going to go with final lap right now and wait for that chicken flag. Ooh, Robert Volk running wide. Bit of late race pressure there from Volk on himself. No one was applying pressure there. Fadavat was too far back and he runs wide again. So Robert Volk might have a little bit of an issue on that car. Can he get it to the line? Is he going to nurse it through? Yes, I think he can. But he definitely made two slight mistakes. One coming into the hairpin and one exiting it. Just got the car a little bit squirrely, but he's managed to hang it all together. And uh, now coming out of Dunlop, he heads towards the line. Coming to the line, check it, flag is out. And Volk is going to take the first victory. Put a butt for the AutoZone team, come through for second. And Lee Thompson on the podium. 
So I think the first podium there for the BMW and Team Red Racing is Lee Thompson. So they'll be pretty ecstatic about that. Julian van der Watt uh, takes some more championship points. Robert Volk does the same thing. Here we go for the Super Cup class. Looking at Jason Campos heading into the sweep, but up towards Dunlop come the two leaders. Brad Lienberg has led, literally led from start to finish and no answer from Jonathan Lafortzi at all. He tried early on, but Liebenberg has just said it all. He uses his final push to pass across the line to ensure that he gets the, the win. He takes it ahead of Lafortzi. Variawa gets his very first podium in Super Cup class. Further back, look at this action. Coming up into the closing stages. Here we go, Roy Campos for the win in the Masters. And you can see the uh, overlay there, just uh, hiding it. There we go, to the line. Brilliant stuff. Campos takes his first win on return to uh, racing. And it looks like Sean Dumini has been able to get through and so has Minaj Maharaj on Johan de Brain in the background. Yes, they have. A bit of a problem there for the Odekir car right in the closing stages. And unfortunately, Johan van de Brain coming through there and finishing up at the back end of Super Cup. There are the unofficial results for the Global Touring Cars. It's Robert Volk ahead of Julian van der Watt and Lee Thompson making up the podium there. So a good effort there from Chemical Logistics ahead of the AutoZone team and Team Red Racing's Lee Thompson. Second of the Chemical Logistics cars there, Scott Temple in fourth ahead of first of the team Toyota Gazoo Racing Corollas of Michael van Rooyen and then Nikani, his teammate, will finish up in sixth place. Seventh on the track but winning the Super Cup class, it's Brad Liebenberg for the Sparco Racing team. Beating out Volkswagen Motorsports' Jonathan Mahotzi and Saud Variawa. What an incredible drive there for his very first podium in the Super Cup class in ninth place. Beating out a potential champion last year in Jeff Kruger from Team Red Racing for the top ten. Brilliant stuff. And a little bit further back from that, of course, was Jason Campos in 11th. 12th place would have been the first of the Masters class, and that was Roy Campos. He beat up Nick Davidson and Andre, van der, uh, Andre Besaid, another big pardon, from Team Perfect Circle. So those are the top three. Volk, Van der Watt, and Thompson. That is your top three in GDCs. And it's uh, Brad Liebenberg, Jonathan Mahotzi, and Saud Variawa, top three in the Global Touring Class, Super Cup class. In the Super Cup Masters class, it was Roy Campos from Nick Davidson, and in third place, on never side note from Team Perfect Circle. So. One winner. That brings us to the Yeah, so I was hoping we'd have the pace that could be in race one, which we seem to have, especially in the start. Um, this is all credit to the team, WCT, the guys there, Ian Schofield, and uh, a little bit of a payback for all the, the time and effort we put into this, so it's fantastic. Robbie, uh, It's a bit of unknown for everybody going to 30 minute race. It's uh, 20 is the longest thus far. So yeah, I suppose get past the 20 minute mark and uh, I suppose see where we position. So starting sixth will, will mean a little bit of work, but maybe try to get a couple positions at the start because if the guys in the front break away, it's, uh, it's gonna be difficult to catch it back up. So yeah, looking forward to it. So I think we've got, we've definitely got the pace to, to challenge the, the first couple of laps. So yeah, I think we'll be strong. Cool, thank you. Yeah, super excited about that one. Uh, John and I had really, really good starts. Uh, he tucked in behind me after turn one, and uh, from there, I mean, we both just put our head down and uh, try to eke out a little bit of a gap there, just to give ourselves a little bit of a cushion. And uh, yeah, at the end there, you know, just controlled the pace a little bit. And uh, obviously, we've got 30 minutes in the, the next race, so tyres are going to take some strain. So it was a bit, uh, yeah, a little bit of time and everything towards the end there, uh, taking a little bit of lines, obviously. Just trying to conserve the tyres a little bit. Um, like I say, this, this, that thing it's going to be quite a long one. Um, but yeah, super, super happy with the results. Big thanks to the team, to Sparko, to MS Technic for the great support. And uh, yeah, to grab, to grab Nathan and Nathan's motorsport for, for all the hard work. It's showing on track, uh, both cars won too, so you know, awesome results. And uh, look forward to the next one. Thank you so much. So Indicani and Van Rooyen on the front row for Toyota Gazoo Racing. This front row shot there for the Gazoo Racing boys to get for the paper if they can. Dunlop branding in the background there. They all run on Dunlop tyres, of course, for global touring cars. Scott Temple and Lee Thompson. Lee Thompson will definitely be looking to stay on the podium after finishing there for the first time this season for Universal Motorsport and Team Red Racing. Van der Watt would love to take a victory here, particularly with AutoZone on the side of his car with a new sponsorship that's looming there for him. Looking forward to seeing whether they're going to be sticking around with him. I think they will be after the, uh, the week that they've had so far and the coverage that they've got. Red flags being withdrawn, final 
staff members and pit crew removed from the grid about to roll out global touring cars and super cup combined there's a rolling start for these guys as well so they will roll off the first six cars and the safety car and then that Volkswagen Motorsport Academy pace car will lead things out for the Super Cup class. Bit of pressure on Mikhail Potamba to be on the front row and on pole position, especially with a pack of drivers behind him. But as I said earlier on, Saud Varia has already taken a victory in terms of his first podium. It's not a victory in the race, but it's a victory for him in terms of getting uh, better and better behind the wheel of his car. And with that, he'll be looking to do more of the same, maybe step it up one or two positions onto that podium after this one. And remember that Mikhail Potamba there, with the Toys R Us car just in the background, that uh, sort of uh, almost like a metallic burgundy Toys R Us car, the one right in shot right now, lights ablaze, um, has just come off an incredible weekend at East London Grand Prix Circuit last weekend at the South African GT Racing Association event where he beat out Marcel Angel, to name a few, um, in the uh, South African GT Racing Association's one-hour endurance races there in his Ferrari 4. 58 beating the 488 of Marcel Angel. So the endurance side of things is definitely something that Mikel Batumba is used to. So will it help him out in this one? There's a very good possibility. However, let's take Roy Campos into the mix as well, having spent a lot of time in endurance racing himself at both national championship level in the Shelby can and then of course also in the South African Endurance Series and in the Inland and Historic Series that have run over the last couple of seasons and has won out the South African TT which of course SWAT Corps, the owners of the Extreme Festival will be hosting again in the middle of June so the SATT is a 45 minute or 45 lap race and uh, Roy Campos has won that on a few occasions. So being on the front row is certainly where Roy Campos wants to be. But front row is Toyota Gazoo Racing as global touring cars make their way to the line for the start. Lights out and down towards turn one. It's Mandalinda Carney side by side with Michael van Rooyen. Can van Rooyen possibly outgun his teammate down into turn one and see what he can do about uh, taking the lead of the race early on. He is going to go around the outside. I think he's possibly looking for a chance there to go through. He's got through. A little bit of maneuver there from Funavat to try and get on the inside of Lee Thompson. Lee Thompson won, wasn't able to get through on Scott Temple. So Temple is into third place, Thompson into four and fifth place. It is a great move there from Funavat. In the background, they start to sort things out big time. Looks like a bit of chopping and changing that happened in the start of the GDC Super Cup category. And as they head towards the top of the hill, you can see Toyota's one, two, three, BMW is four, uh, Ford is five and in sixth place. It is a good start. Here comes uh, Mikel Patumba with uh, Campos around his outside. Oh, an untouch! Jason Campos getting a little bit out of shape there. And Mikel Patumba getting a tag from behind as well as uh, Saud Variawa dives on his inside. Jason Campos was very, very aggressive coming in there and he made it stick. Got a little tap from Mikel Patumba just to say thanks for coming through. And Patumba was very lucky to catch that car and just hang on. But there was a big moment there for Mikel Patumba as Jason Campos came flying past him and uh, made the move stick. Further back, Roy Campos unfortunately he's dropped back a few positions. He didn't quite get the start he wanted. He's dropped down to about seventh place there behind Jeff Kruger. Kruger's already behind both uh, Jonathan Machotzi and Brad Liebenberg who've come through from the start. We watched the Global Touring Cars head into the S's for the second time of asking in this 30 minute plus one lap. And Lee Thompson is applying massive pressure onto the back end of Scott Temple looking for a way to get up there and make it uh, Team Red Racing back into third place. Mikel Patamba led over the line, but it looks like he's dropped back now behind uh, Jason Campos and Saud Variawa. Brad Liebenberg is still on his tail, but looking for a way through. Let's see if he's able to do anything about that as they come now uh, to complete another lap in anger. Thompson, the meat in the sandwich there between the two chemical logistics cars of Robert Volk and Scott Temple, his teammate just up the road from him. Battle of the Ones there, remember 31 and 41 on those cars. 41 is Volk, 31 is uh, the hard charging Scott Temple looking for a way through on Mundlo and Dakani and Mundlo and Dakani in the 21 car of course making it a three-way battle for the battle of the ones here goes him Dakani putting his car right in the middle of the circuit giving no room whatsoever to Temple but there's a bit of a maneuver yes I thought so Volk diving through on Lee Thompson 
Thompson gets up the in or tries to defend on the inside, but Robert Volk was perfectly placed and made that move stick into turn one. Making it formation flying now. And in numerical order, 21, 31, 41. 37 behind that, but it's the 95 Rustenburg Rocket out front leading at this point in time. Van der closing things down now and uh, looking for a way through, but hasn't been able to do anything. Oh, Temple's got a problem. Temple runs wide. Lee Thompson's going to make him pay, and he does. Thompson puts the Team Red Racing M2 just between, and uh, the meat and the sandwich there between the two Investcam Chemical Logistics to go to Corollas. Good move there from the two of them as they come up towards Dunlop Corner again. Late on the brakes from Lee Thompson trying to return the favour there. And oh, what a move! What a move from Robert Volk! Robert Volk using the inside line on Ndekani. The two of them are going to go side by side down towards turn one. Mando Ndekani, well, he's going to be aware that he's got a couple of push to passes to play with and he cannot uh, afford to use any too soon because he may need them later on. It's a bit of a chess game there with those push to passes now with a 30 minute Enduro as opposed to a 10 minute sprint race, a 10 lap sprint race. Coming into the S's again, Thompson on the back end of Ndekani looking for a way past as well now. Look at the pressure being applied there by Lee Thompson right underneath that big wing underneath the back of the Toyota Corolla his teammate disappearing at the front end Michael Van Royen doing everything right at this point in time and that's why Robert Volk was pushing so hard he cannot afford to let Michael Van Royen get away to the tune of the, the couple of seconds he's got on him little rubbing there between Team Red Racing's Lee Thompson and Nakani as they come down oh another little touch side by side through Chevy Lee's on the outside but he had the inside line for the next corner if he stays on that outside line not a lot of grip out there but he makes those Dunlops work Thompson gonna look on the inside no he doesn't but Van Avat does Van der has a big look on the inside of Temple. Temple shuts it all. No chance there for any of those guys to change things up. But here we go. Slipstream City time. Watch out for Scott Temple. He's got two cars to slipstream. Maybe able to get a little bit of extra pace there from uh, the Toyota and the BMW ahead of him. In fact, look at the steam train. It is four cars and you can literally throw a proverbial blanket over those first four cars. Those four cars are s sitting at the moment in three, four, five and sixth place. Absolutely amazing stuff here from Global Touring Cars. Steam train is just being led out by Ndekani at this point in time. He's got pressure from Thompson. He's got pressure from Temple. He's got pressure from Van der Any one of those guys can force a mistake out of him. Doesn't look like there's any mistakes coming out of Michael Van Rooyen. And he, this could be possibly what he was looking at in terms of his strategy for the weekend. Brad Liebenberg behind Mikhail Patamba. No change in the top three there. So would Variawa behind Jason Campos for one and two. Variawa in second place has a little look. Campos shuts the door. Locks up the brakes into the hairpin. Toys R Us and Patamba Racing Machine, the Creative Ink guys did such a great job on that car as they come down towards the sweep. Behind him it's the Sparko car of Brad Liebenberg, Machotzi and Jeff Kruger. They've bridged a little bit of a gap now and uh, just in the background we'll try and pick up on who's leading out the Masters. It should possibly be Roy Campos or Nick Davidson, one of the two white cars on track. I think it is Campos who leads out at this point in time ahead of uh, Nick Davidson. And then behind Nick Davidson looks like it's Andre Besaidenot for Team Perfect Circle. In fact I think Besaidenot might be up to second. He is indeed. So it's Besaid Note up in a second place. Just caught a glimpse of him in the background and up in a second place looking to maintain the lead of the Masters Championship in this Global Touring Car Super Cup class. A little smoke out of Brad's car there. Is that a concern to be watching out for later on? And he just lock up into turn one going a little bit too hard to try and close that gap down on Variawa and on Mikel Patamba. Patamba and Variawa now through the big hangar sweep onto the back end of Jason Campos. Campos also, I didn't get a chance to mention it, but also with lots of experience when it comes to endurance racing. Now partnering up. Oh, what a move! Oh, Brad Liebman tags the Toys R Us car. He dives on the inside trying to get through on Mikel Patamba and he's blown something. Something is broken on Brad's car. He dives up the inside trying to get through on Mikel Patamba and the Sparko car is on the sideline. Brad Liebenberg could be out of this. He is. Brad Liebenberg is out of this race. Something is broken on that car in the attempt to get through on Mikel Patamba. He had a big look on the inside going into the hairpin. And uh, just a touch between the two of them. They both ended off going off track. Patamba is back on track and is continuing to circulate down in fifth place just ahead of Roy Campos. But what a move there from Brad Liebenberg. That could be a costly one. Jason Campos and Jeff Kruger must be thinking, well, Jason Campos won't know about it because it happened behind him. But Jeff Kruger will certainly know about it. And Kruger now has a chance of closing that gap down in the championship points between himself and championship leader Brad Liebenberg, who's now stricken on the outside of the circuit. Super Cup cars fly through hangar, heading up towards the hairpin, and Jeff Kruger now realizing he's got to go and try and get to the front end of this battle. Get ahead of Makotsi, get ahead of Campos, get ahead of Variawa. But Tampa still circulating, doesn't look like there's any problems on his car, even though there was a slight touch there between himself and 
the smoking gun on the left hand side of the track there of uh, Brad Lindbergh. Sawood Variawa has gone to third place his first podium. Can he go to first place and take his first win? That's a big, big factor to take into account here. Let's go back to this fight. Look at this. Absolutely anything and anybody can have what it takes here to win this little battle out for third place in Global Touring Cars. 21 versus 37 versus 31 versus the 33 car. They are absolutely at each other's throats. Brilliant stuff here from Indicani to fend off Lee Thompson, Scott Temple, and uh, Julian van der We've got a replay coming up to have a look and see exactly what happened there between Brad Liebenberg and uh, Mikhail Patamba. Similar corner, you can see Liebenberg went on the inside. Mikhail Patamba opened up the door, gave him a little bit of room, but Brad tagged the back end of him. As soon as he went off the track, something blew on the engine. I picked up on some white smoke on Brad's car earlier on, and it looks like he's going to have to retire the Sparco car, and it's out of uh, a double points race here for this 30 minuter. Late breaking from Indicani. Lee Thompson trying a different line. Scott Temple could get through Jan Thompson. Thompson could have run a little bit too wide there in his attempt to get through with a different line. He runs wide onto the dirt as well. He's going to have to slot in behind Julian van der Butt. He's lost traction and he's going to drop down two positions, three positions now possibly. As they come under brakes for turn one. Van der Butt pulls out to go defensive. Temple tries to find a different line, line through there on Indicani. Indicani doing such a good job. Placement of that car is perfect from Indicani to keep out the attentions of the three cars behind him. Jason Campos, Saud Variawa and Jonathan Mahotzi all with quickest personal best lap times of the weekend being set on that last pass. Sean Dermany right at the back of the field now being lapped by a couple of the global touring cars coming through there. You can see those are the top two that have run through Michael van Rooyen and Robert Valk. The steam train's about to get there. Oh and Temple runs wide. Temple runs wide coming out of the hip and here comes Lee Thompson. Can he get through on him? Thompson's going to have to drive around the, out, the outside of Chevy Sweep, which is not an easy thing to do. We saw it earlier on. He's able to get the traction out there, despite there being not a lot of uh, maneuvering to happen on those Dunlop tyres. But they are crying no more, and only just to get through that, hair, that big, big sweep at Chevy. Fun about now. Turns his attentions to the Toyota Gazoo racing machine of uh, Imdekani, and Imdekani has gone defensive. He holds the inside line, not giving Julian Van der Butt any room to play. Van der Butt's just going to drive around his outside though. He runs wide. Van der Butt ran a little bit too hot into turn one. That could give Temple another shot here into the S's. Temple's late on the brakes. Is he good enough to get on the inside? He is. Temple gets on the inside. Here comes Lee Thompson. Oh, Lee Thompson looking for a way through, but he's not able to make it stick there. He nearly followed Temple through. But uh, just a late dive on the inside from Temple. Saw him go through. Moving out of the way there is Sean Dumini, just allowed the steam train to come through, as I said. These global touring car boys are putting on a show here. Certainly one of the best races we've seen out of this category in a long, long time. And it's big battles between four cars for third place on track. Big battles further back there, Super Cup also. But what a start to this 30 minute endurance race. Hard on the brakes comes into Carney, around the outside goes Temple, Temple. Oh, a tag! A massive tag there into Carney, taking the back end of Scott Temple. And uh, wanted to try and help him take that bumper off, possibly. The bumper was already loose, and Temple has been spun out. Temple spun out and stuck on the sideline. Can he get the car going? And carney has got a problem. Look at the front left of that car. Bits and pieces of the car flying off as well. As they head down towards turn one, it's now Julian van der Watt up into third place. Lee Thompson into fourth. Bit of a gap between those uh, two cars now on Indicani after Indicani and Temple came together at the final corner. Dunlop, and oh, Van der Vat runs wide. <coughs> Van der Vat runs wide, and unfortunately, and he loses out. There's something broken in the car. Something is broken on that Van der Vat Ford. The AutoZone car goes slamming onto the sideline and off the side of the circuit to the fastest sweep here. Hangar sweep is hair raising enough when the car is under control, but when you've got something broken on the car, like we've just seen there from Van der Vat, it can get very loose and out of shape quickly, and that's exactly what happened. So Imdekani has now moved up into fourth place. Lee Thompson gifted third. Here comes uh, Michael van Rooyen in amongst the back markers of Global Touring Car Super Cup. Odekir car of Yonder Brain has been about to be caught. He's got through on, on uh, Nick Davidson. And he's about to get through there on Yonder Brain. De Brain will probably give him a little bit of room me into hangar just to allow the Toyota Gazoo Racing man through. The Rustenberg Rocket looking for a way past. He gets through. Easily done in the end and waited for his opportunity. He's not going to chance anything now. Thompson uh, is too far back and I don't think there's going to be any answer there from Robert Volk either. Volk in second. Here comes Variawa. Variawa loses out to Machotzi. Machotzi going to possibly 
uh, lead the steam train through there to allow Jeff Kruger onto Variawa as well. So would Variawa at this point in time hanging on for third place, but he's got Jeff Kruger, multiple champion in this form of racing. And of course, just losing out to the championship last year by one point to Brad Liebenberg, who's now on the sideline. Is that a turning point in this championship? Will it be crucial at the end of this championship? Jason Campos looking for another victory. Jeff Kruger needs one badly to try and bring himself back into the hunt for this championship. As Variawa now goes on the attack to get back at Jonathan Mahotzi. Mahotzi in second place. This is definitely one of the best races we've seen out of Super Cup and out of Global Touring Cars in a long, long time. 31 car. Temple is back on track, but he's a long way down. Probably a lot of lap down. Have a look and see. He has the replay going up into uh, Dunlop Corner. And the carney has got the inside line. Temple comes around his outside. Tries to close the door. I think what happened there is as he tried to close the door, Munda just ran wide. And uh, the two of them tagging each other. A bit of uh, bits and pieces of Munda's car ending up on the sideline along with the stricken car from uh, Chemical Logistics, the Invest Chem Chemical Logistics team. And it looks like a uh, bit of issues there. Now we're going to go back to the battle for Super Cup. Mokhotzi in second place, trying to close down on Jason Campos. Sawad Variawa soaking up the pressure coming from Jeff Kruger right behind him. Mokhotzi running a little bit wide there, got a little bit out of shape, but uh, that'll give Sawad Variawa a little sniff. And if Jeff Kruger just keeps his nose clean, he may be able to stay out of trouble and still end up at the front of this race or possibly even with a win. Team Red Racing Man, the, the lead and captain of the team there. Of course, doing such a good job so far this season. But he's had his work cut out for him big time with some new contenders for the crown. And one of them is certainly Zawad Variawa. The other one, of course, just in the background there, the man on pole, Mikhail Patamba. So Patamba in fifth place. Waiting to see if we can pick him up as he comes onto the back straight. There he is, just coming onto the, the main straightaway now. As they head down towards turn one, it's Jason Campos for Campos Transport and turn one. Of course, on the back of his car as well, the insurance company that he looks after. GTI in the background, of course, that is uh, Jonathan Mahotzi. And the, the Volkswagen Motorsport team will be pretty happy with his performance so far, ahead of Saud Variawa. SVR Racing, or SV Racing on the side of that car. And Jeff Kruger for Team Red Racing there in fourth. Campos getting a little bit out of shape as he came out of hangar. Pressure starting to be felt there. As Mahotzi closes him down, and so does Sawood Variawa. Jeff Kruger, as I said, maybe just waiting for a little bit later on in this race for a possibility to pounce and uh, catch them all off guard. He's done it on a few occasions in various formats of racing. S starting his career. We've got a replay as well coming up as well. Let's have a look at this. As we go into uh, another lap completed there for Jason Campos, leading things out. Let's see. This is uh, Julian van der Bart just putting a wheel wrong. Something broke there. And as soon as he came back on track, Lee Thompson dived on his inside, fortunately, and got out the way. But you'll see as he turns into hangar, that broken piece of the car on the left-hand side just sends him spinning off out of hangar sweep and into the kitty and onto the sideline. And unfortunately, out of this race as well. I'm not sure if he got back on track and was able to uh, circulate back into the pit lane. Looks like he may have possibly done that. Oh, and uh, that's Makhotsi putting a wheel on the dirt as well. These guys are pushing hard. The Dunlop tyres are starting to feel the effects of a slightly longer version of the racing that they were intended to do. But of course, there are great rubber underneath these cars. There you see Funabat working and the team working hard to get Funabat back on track. Looks like there could be a possibility of maybe a broken wheel on the back end of that car that caused the issue. And there's some suspension struts also out there as well being uh, uh, fought out by Stewie and the team. They do an incredible job. They really do. See if they can get that car sorted out. So Funabat in pit lane. If he gets back on track, he can still score some points. Remember, it's a long way still to go. We are 13 and a half minutes of racing still to be contended. Mahotsi trying to close things down. Here comes a move on the inside. Is that oh Maharaj? Yes, it is. Robert Volk has certainly closed the gap down between himself and Michael van Rooyen. Zoo Racing versus the Chemical Logistics team. And they have now completed uh, another lap in anger. Drive so far from these guys and a nice bit of race action that's happening out on track between them as well. As Michael van Rooyen tries to contend and fend off the uh, possible attack from Robert Volk. Volk. Volk is chasing, so he's probably pushing a little bit harder than uh, Michael van Rooyen is right now. Van Rooyen cannot afford 
to make any mistakes. There is Scott Temple in for a, for a little bit of a change up as well. Busy time in pit lane there for Global Touring Cars. Temple in with some damage. Van der Vat in with a big, big uh, broken bit on the back end of that car. Not sure who, what's gone down there, but uh, maybe we can get Claudio down there. Get some more uh, bits and pieces of cars on the outside of the final corner. Still parts of the Toyota Gazoo Racing front nose there of uh, Mandela Nakani. They're coming up on the back end of Team Perfect Circles. Andre van der Marva. Oh, Andre van der Marva. Andre Besaid, no, I beg your pardon. He currently sits in second place in the Masters class behind Roy Campos. So Frisco looking for a chance now to possibly get there. Speaking of chances, look at the way Makotsi is applying pressure. Massive pressure coming from Makotsi uh, to get through on Campos. Will it pay off? Jason Campos going to place that car to perfection if he can, just to avoid any opening of doors for Jonathan Mahotsi. Mahotsi will definitely make it pay. Variawa will be waiting to see if anything goes wrong between those two. Little push to pass coming there from Jonathan Mahotsi, trying to use the additional bit of power that's given to him by that push to pass mechanism, similar to the DRS system in an F1 car. A little bit of extra power, but unfortunately, it's once again, Perfect placement and oh, Makotsi runs wide. Variawa going to dive on the inside into the S's. Can he get there? No, he can't. Big move from Variawa. Nearly made Makotsi pay. Makotsi just tried to run into turn one a little bit too hot. Nearly cost him second place. He was looking for first but uh, nearly lost second in the attempt. Great drive here from Jason Campos. He's controlled things from the front since he got there. He literally got there off the start. Super start from Campos. As I said, Jeff Kruger there in fourth place. Not out of it just yet. Got Ten minutes of action still to go. Let's go down in the pit lane. Claudio's caught up with one of the drivers there, Mandla Nakani, to find out what went wrong. Mandla, talk me through what happened there between you and Scott Temple. Uh, Team Scott just was closing the door uh, midpoint through the corner and had inside lines. They kind of shut me out and hit me on the front left. There's no way I could go, I was on the inside of the corner. And uh, have you sustained much damage? Uh, front end still seems to be okay, but I think uh, we've still got a. I've been struggling with the rear left wheel being loose since the first lap, so I've been trying to hold on, but I think now I just gave in again. Cool, all the best, man. I'm on the Connie there just giving us a little insight as to what went down there as uh, him and Temple came together. And now coming into uh, the front end of the Masters class, uh, the leader overall, Michael Van Rooyen, has got through on Roy Campos. Robert Volk has done the same thing as they went in there. Van Rooyen runs a little bit wide coming out of the hairpin. Head down a little hill into Chevy Sweep. Campos not going to try and run with Volk to try and bridge a little bit more of a controllable gap there over Andre Besaidno from Team Perfect Circle for the lead of what is currently the Masters class. Manoj Maharaj has moved up into third place in that category. So a good run there from the SMD Exotics man. His teammate Sean Dermody behind that and a bit further back from that of course it'll be Johan de Brain in the Odecure car. Not sure what's happened to uh, Nick Davidson and to Darby but uh, we'll keep an eye on them for the two of them but here they come back up towards the hairpin. Once again, Campos under attack from Mahotsi. Mahotsi looking for a way past, but hasn't found one yet. And Campos has been in pristine condition there. He really is doing a superb job there for Campos Transport in turn one. Looking for a possible victory here. It'll be the second one for him for the season if he gets it. But, uh, this is definitely one that you want to win. Thompson still circulating there in third place about to be caught though by the front end of Global Touring Car Super Cup class they've been so hard at it they're starting to close in on the back end of uh, the Team Red Racing and Universal Motorsport car of oh mistake from Campos Campos makes a huge mistake running wide out of turn one and Campos drops to second place he pushed a little bit too hard maybe he's just he 
getting those, those Dunlops up a little bit too much, much more than what Mahotsi was able to do. Mahotsi now leads out. Can Jonathan Mahotsi become the fourth person to win in 2021 in the Super Cup class? Campos was hoping not. So was so with Variawa because Variawa would love to have that one now that he's taken a podium already in the first race earlier on in the day. So it's Jonathan Mahotsi from Jason Campos. Sawood Variawa and Jeff Kruger, your top four. They currently run in Scott, take us through your version of what happened there with Manda. Yeah, so a bit of a racing incident so far. We are obviously gonna look at it afterwards, but I basically had him on the outside and next thing I was turned around, he clipped the rear of my car, so um, I don't know what happened if it was intentional or not or what, but obviously unfortunate. And we've got a bit of an injection issue now, which uh, is obviously in lieu of that. So, really unfortunate, but uh, hey, we're going to try to score some points and, and carry on. I think it was a good heat until then. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at it afterwards and we'll give a comment then, you know. Awesome job. Always good to get both drivers' opinions of those uh, kind of incidents, and we've got both of them now. So, uh, let's see what the uh, COC and the rest of the organisers have to say about that incident. I think they'll probably call it uh, a bit of a racing incident because both drivers could be a default at, at some point of the, of the uh, impact that happened between the two of them. Not our call to make, we'll just uh, continue to tell you what's happening. And right now it is Jason Campos who's losing ground to Jonathan Mahotsi and being reeled in by Sawood Variawa. Campos is battling to turn that car. He heads the turn one and Campos transport car down towards turn one. But you can see he's uh, really battling to turn that car in. It's not as smooth as, it was, as what it was earlier on. So would Variawa and I'm going to try and capitalize on the fact that you can see that uh, Campos could be in an ailing machine at the front. Could get up to second place and step up one more step on the podium after his first podium in race one. Jeff Kruger just waiting in the sidelines and uh, looking to pounce as soon as he can if something goes wrong. Looks like that's Temple banking his way back onto track. As he heads down pit lane and back into the fray. He's a long way down now. Oh, and Variawa runs wide now. Variawa putting two wheels on the dirty stuff. Could potentially give Jeff Kruger a chance and nearly gives him a chance And Campos, who makes a similar mistake. Maybe Jay was caught watching him in the rearview mirror and missed the breaking point. Good possibility of that happening. Jason Campos maybe just watching Variawa run wide and missed the breaking point and ran wide into the happen. Variawa and I'm going to try and make him uh, pay for that. SV Racing versus Campos in Turn 1. Volkswagen Motorsport leading out the Super Cup class at this point with Mahotsi behind the wheel. Team Red Racing and Universal Motorsports Jeff Kruger coming along. And they're slowly but surely starting to reel those two cars in. Temple back on track. He's got Temple a long way down now, but of course being back on track means he will still score points. Valuable points in a, I would say, a double point scoring event. They usually are when you get an endurance race like this. We get also onto the back end of Saud Variawa now looking for that third spot. Bohotsi controlling things from the lead. Same thing can be said about what uh, Michael van Rooyen is doing at the front end of this race as he controls an almost one and a half second gap over Robert Volk for first and second in the global touring cars. And the Carney still stricken in pit lane. About to get out the car, that could be the end of the race, it is. Manda and Carney having to climb out of the race car is not what he wanted. And it doesn't look like they could get that car fixed at Toyota Gazoo Racing. Such a pity there for him, the Carney was going so well. SMD Exotics machines of Dermany and Maharaj still out on track. Seeing uh, the 44 car there of Minaj Maharaj coming through the final corner, lifting up that back wheel in his attempt to stay in third place ahead of Johan De Brain, who's just behind him. De Brain's got a head now of Sean Dermany. A bit of a change up there with uh, De Brain, the meat and the sandwich between the uh, SMD Exotics cars. Variawa still hasn't found a way through there on Campos. Kruger hasn't done the same thing on Variawa. We're getting to that crucial time. There's two and a half minutes to go. And 
It looks like Mahotsi is getting lots of support there from his teammate Daniel Rowe on the sideline. Saying, come on, hang on. You've got two and a half minutes to go plus a lap. Probably means about three laps of racing still to happen here for this incredible 30-minute uh, enduro. That is one and two on track. Michael van Rooyen with Robert Volk right there with him. What can Volk do now in this next two minutes and 14 seconds plus one more lap? Possibly spoil the day there for Michael van Rooyen who's literally led out from second place on the grid. Maraj also putting a little bit of an effort in to stay ahead there. The Lusso Cafe SMD Exotics car ahead of the Odecure car of Yonder Brain. Team Perfect Circles on every side note about to be caught and passed by the Toyota. He doesn't have to worry about that. He'll probably just let Scott Temple through. Temple trying to make up some ground now. Still wants to be classified, so he's going to have to work hard in order to be classified. 1 minute 37 seconds to go. So possibly this could be the penultimate lap about to be started here from Scott Temple's point of view. Jeff Kruger's got a problem. Jeff Kruger with a problem with a, a minute and 25 seconds to go. Is he pulling in a pit lane? He is. Kruger coming in the pit lane. There's something gone wrong there on Jeff Kruger's car for Team Red Racing. Dropping him out of fourth place in the Super Cup category. And yeah, that's it. Looks like Jeff Kruger's day is done. He doesn't even roll down to where his pit box is. He realizes that whatever that car issue is, it's terminal. And he won't be able to get to the finish line. That is a massive, massive loss there to this sort of fight that we're watching. Second and third place in the Super Cup class, about to be caught by first and second in the Global Touring Cars. 40 odd seconds before they hit the line, could there be an additional lap thrown in here? Remember we did say it was a 30 minute enduro plus one lap and I think they're going to have to do another two laps. They're not going to make it to the line within the next uh, 35 seconds. They're going to be there much quicker, which means this will be the start of the penultimate lap. Two laps to go as they cross the line now for Michael Van Rooyen and for Robert Volk. Sawad Variawa stays in third place now and will cement a, probably a third overall for the day in the uh, Global Touring Car Super Cup class. Possibly even second overall for the day depending on where uh, the other guys finished. I can't remember exactly what the, the finish of that uh, Super Cup class was in race number one. I know that Brad Liebenberg took the victory. Uh, Mahotsi was second. And no, no, he'll get, he'll get third overall. Um, possibly second overall, depending on how far uh, behind Brad Liebenberg he was in race number one. Look at the pressure now from Robert Volk. He wants this victory. He is putting massive amounts of pressure onto the Rustenburg Rocket. Michael van Rooyen in the Toyota Gazoo Racing Corolla. It's Toyota versus Toyota heading up towards Dunlop for the last, the second last time. I'll probably get the one lap to go board now as they come through. There's a move from Volk. <coughs> Dives on the inside of Michael van Rooyen. Didn't quite make it thick, but he's certainly in with a chance now as they start their final lap. Last lap board out. One to go for Michael van Rooyen. Can he keep out Robert Volk? As he comes up on the back end of Saad Variawa and Jason Campos fighting hard for second and third in the Super Cup class. Two flags are going to be waving frantically there for Saad Variawa. He's going to realize they're coming. He moves over. Brilliant driving for the young man. That's the way to do it. Just com stays completely out of harm's way there. Doesn't want to get involved in this sort of fight for the lead of the race overall. Let's see if Jason Campos is going to be as nice for these two as they come up to the happen. Michael van Rooyen will go on the inside line to go defensive. He goes almost instantaneously there. Robert Volk diving on the inside. He's not close enough to make it stick though. Volk right underneath the exhaust pipe there of the Toyota Corolla ahead of him. Very tight stuff here between these two. Campos still giving it everything he can as he goes to the top of the hill. Jonathan Mahotz is going to have to do one more lap. Campos is going to have to do one more. The lead is going to have all possible lead change here around the outside. Can Volk drive around the outside? He's trying to. He tries very hard, but oh, Michael Van Rooyen runs him wide and onto the dirty stuff. Van Rooyen's going to get the victory. He does. The Rustenburg Rocket takes the win in the 30-minute endurance. Beating out Robert Volk. Saud Variawa will be classified in third place, but there's still a fight on there between Jason Campos and Mahotsi for the win in the Super Cup class. They're into the S's. Here we go. Coming to the line is Scott Temple. He'll be finishing up. Temple will finish up in possibly fourth place overall in the Global Touring Cars. This is the lead now for Mahotsi. 
in the Super Cup class, just behind Lee Thompson. Lee Thompson's going to get third, and a great podium finish there for Lee Thompson for Team Red Racing and the Universal Motorsport team. The flag is on standby for Jonathan Machotzi. He'll become the fourth driver in Global Touring Car Super Cup this season to take a win. And what a way to do it at your home track. For Volkswagen Motorsport, it's Jonathan Machotzi to take the win in the Super Cup class. Beating out Jason Campos and Sawood Variawa. Roy Campos will take the Masters. A nice bit of flame out of that car for Lee Thompson heading down towards Turn 1. Let's get confirmation of the top 10 though. Michael van Rooyen, Robert Volk and Lee Thompson top 3 in the global touring cars and overall. Top 3 in the Super Cups is Machotzi, Jason Campos and Sawood Variawa. But Mikel Patamba also just off the podium in 4th place. And in 5th place and taking the Masters class, Roy Campos. A double win there for him in the Masters, ahead of Andre Besaidenote with a double second place. And Johanna Brain in the Odecure car comes through for third place and the tenth spot overall. What a global touring car race that was. That was some great action. And certainly getting better and better every time these guys go to uh, battle at any of the circuits that we tra traverse here in South Africa. We've got another 30 minutes coming our way in only a couple of minutes time. So uh, just enough time to catch our breath and catch up with some of the drivers down in the park for my area. Michael van Rooyen, it was literally lights to flag there for him. He outgunned his teammate into turn one and uh, was able to get past Mandlo Nakani, who unfortunately did not finish this race. So the Rustenburg Rocket will be happy with that. As he climbs out of his car, he'll take a walk over. And uh, yeah, strong is how you finish a race. And that's exactly what he did. Fast Freddy there from Fast Development is going to tell him all about it and he's happy with the performance of the car. High fives from the team as well there for the, the Rustenburg Rocket, Michael van Rooyen. And his dad, next man to come up to go and say congratulations there. Nas van Rooyen going to come and say, that's the way we do it, son. Robert Volk tried hard right in the closing stages to try and get through there on van Rooyen, but just was left wanting to the tune of about uh, 0.3 of a second, three tenths between Robert Volk and Van Rooyen across the line after 30 minutes and a lap. That's some great racing. Lee Thompson, a couple of minutes, almost a minute back though, but uh, still in third place. And a podium again for Team Red Racing and the Universal Motorsports squad. So we've got Jonathan Makotsi on standby down in the park for my area. Let's go and catch up with John after his first victory and the fourth winner for 2021. Jono, uh, finally your first Super Cup win, and it had to be a, an endurance race, you must be stoked. Stoke doesn't begin to explain. I am over the, over the moon. Um, and this was a very special one, like, like you said, Maiden Victory here in PE. I also took my Maiden Victory in Polo Cup a couple of years ago, so, you know, PE has been very, very good to me. Uh, it just happens to be Volkswagen's home turf, you, got it. you must be happy. Eh? Absolutely, Volkswagen, Volkswagen's home turf, uh, the team is based here. The team has done an exceptional job all weekend and I couldn't thank them anymore. Awesome job, well done bud. Thank you. Michael van Rooyen, the first GDC endurance race and you took it. Yes, um, by a very, very, very small margin though. Um, I think it was a brilliant race for myself um, and for Robbie. Uh, I managed to get a bit of a gap in the beginning and uh, I got stuck a little bit behind the back markers of the Super Cup guys and I could see him closing all the time and uh, I was pushing every lap as hard as I could and uh, second last corner made a small mistake, um, went a little bit in art into Chevy on the exit and uh, had to cover in, uh, in the last corner and I think it made for, a, for an excellent finish. Um, it was genuinely hard work but um, I'm so tough to, to have won it. Awesome job, well done bud. Thanks a lot.